We are Jesse yeah. and JD from CJ92 and iHeartRadio Canada, and we are joined by the drummer of Godsmack, Shannon Larkin. How are you, dude? I feel good. I feel real good. You must be excited. Not only a new album called Lighting Up the Sky uh, coming out in February, but an album that's been a long time coming, the longest gap we've ever had between Godsmack albums for the record. So how exciting is that? And what's coming off a layoff like that feel like? Well, I tell you, you know, my genius, Sully, had this plan when I joined the band. I joined in 22, so 20 years ago. And he was like, we'll do records every four years. So that gives us a year to write and record it, two years to tour, work it, support it, and then a year to just piss off and go home and re-meet your bed and pillow and loved ones and dogs and i thought that we all thought that was just the greatest idea because then you know that last year off when we take a year off after three years of working and being in each other's grill it gave us that excitement to come back when we did get back together and make new music and and go and tour and be together so the fact that the pandemic happened really only added a year every four years we drop a record so now because the pandemic will be five years. So what happened, we just had way more time to throw out a lot of songs and get what we feel is a great new set of Godsmack music, which will be our final set. Now, Shannon, it's interesting to hear you, you know, talk about Sully yeah. the way you do. Hey, buddy. Raider, baby. I know we suck this year, but lifelong Raider <laughs> fan just had to say it. You know, I've been a Raiders fan forever. And, and this is one of those years where I just watch the game in the background because it's too hard to bring yourself to watch it. I'm actually going to Vegas to see them against the Chargers in two weeks. And I don't even know if I'm going to enjoy it. But you should be used to it being a Raiders fan by now. I mean, like it's been what? 20 years since we were in the Super Bowl and lost to Tampa Bay over 20 years. Whenever you want to start a Raiders podcast, let's do that. <laughs> Maybe when they get back in Super Bowl contention, then we'll do that. <laughs> Shannon, I was going to say, man, like, you know, you, you opened up talking to JD, calling Sully a genius. And, you know, Godsmack has been around for so long. You guys are doing so many great things. People are still coming to your shows and, and get excited for your albums. You know, why make the statement that this is your final album? Like, what drew you guys to that conclusion? That's it. That's why. Isn't it? Like, you know, 25 years of putting records out and we've been this guy. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't go gi giants to stadiums or but we've never had a flop and I'm 55, dude. And uh, you know, we were playing in the UK last month and the band, the Ravens Age, it's Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. His son plays guitar for this band. You know, maybe third, fourth show, whatever. I'm like, hey dude, you know, how old are you by the way? And he's like, I'm 23. And I was like, my daughter is 23. And I, I was like, wow. And I'm not saying we're old, I'm not gonna be that guy, but I'm saying it's like kind of like sports, man. But Michael Jordan was like, He's going to retire. And everybody's like, yeah, he's old. The dude was like 45. And I'm like, that's old. And I'm not saying it's all because we're old. We also feel like we've had great success. Like we haven't had a flop. And we don't want to keep on going until we get a flop and then have to go out like that. So our thinking was go out on top. We had an additional two years to write a record with this pandemic. So we threw out more songs than, than what made the record. And we feel like every band says, but... We feel it's our best record yet. And we're not saying we're going to break up. We're not breaking up. There's there's a thing called cycle touring. And so like, you know, you put a record out, that's a product that we sell it, you know, we make money, but it's still a product that we have to sell. And if your product doesn't sell, then you let down a lot of people. And so there's pressure to be in a band like mine. And we're not going to do some kind of cash grab. Oh, last time, last tour come pay $500 for me. And then two years later, we'll be back to charge you 600. No, we're not gonna break up. We're gonna just uh, have the last cycle tour, which means this is the last product that we have to sell. And it makes sense to us because we only play an hour, hour and a half hour to, to two hours in there. And like, after every show, when we talk to our fans, we're like, why didn't you play this song? Why didn't you play this song? And we're like, we only have so much time. So over 25 years, we have too many like hits that our fans want to hear us play already. And hopefully we're going to get another two off this record. I mean, one of them is doing really well right now. And so my point is, is why keep making records when you're in your mid fifties and risk, you know, not only, you know, getting too old or not selling and letting people down. And so we felt that we want to A, go out on top and B, remain a band and continue to play and tour Canada, tour the Americas, but on our terms. Now, after this record, in our mid to late 50s where we live right now, 
You know what I mean? We can play when we feel strong and we know we can represent our music and our band and still look good, but we're not we're not going to break up or something. We've been successful and we don't need to make more music when we can barely play our fans what they want to hear now. Shane, that's such a great answer because I was going to say there's so many rock bands out there. I'm sure you can think of them as I say it that, you know, say this is the final tour. This is it. This is it. And, you know, 10 years later, they're still doing the final tour and it kind of, you know, waters down the band. So I'm glad you guys are doing what you're doing. You're not saying this is it. You're just saying no more music, but we're still going to be around. That's pretty cool. You also mentioned all the hits you guys have. And, you know, when you guys do press tours like this, you know, we get all these little promo kits where we start reading about you and, and you read things like Godsmack has more top 10 rock songs than bands like the Foo Fighters and Aerosmith. That is a, a crazy accomplishment that I think a lot of people might not know. Like, how does it feel to be in a band right now that, you know, has more top 10 rock songs than like the bands I just mentioned? You know, it, it's, it's surreal. And it's so funny, you know, like Sully writes most of our songs, you know what I mean? And, and I know the guy for 16, 17 years before I even joined Godsmack. We were friends, you know, and he does, he's not sitting around trying to write hit songs or something. He writes songs. And that's why all of our records sound different. And if you look at the evolution of the band from a more hard rock band than a metal band, which when I joined, we were pretty much metal, touring with Metallica. Yeah. I, does that answer that? We'll I take so. it. I, I, I'm curious about just like, you know, like Shannon, you alluded to earlier, you know, you're coming up about you're at two decades in the band, right? Like there's gotta be a ton of gratitude, a lot of reflection that comes with that. Like if you look back on two decades of doing the damn thing, like what have you learned along the way? What are your takeaways? You know, again, it's surreal. Cause I, I saw, I'm a guy that started playing drums young, started playing clubs when I was 13. I've never, I'm that dude. I've never worked. I've always played drums. Started playing clubs, 13, got signed when I was 20 to Atlantic Records with this band Rothschild, went on to Ugly Kid Joe, hey man, I played, I've just been doing it. And so 21 years ago, yeah, it was Godsmack. And so looking back now at the strife and pain from this machine music business that I'm in and I chose or chose me or whatever it was, somehow ended up in, you know, it was all worth it because of Godsmack and Sully Arna and Tony Mambola, Robbie Merrill. These guys are like my brothers and I, I can't believe it, honestly, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at you right now. I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe how good our last record did, let alone all these records. So all the reflection back on these past years is just, it's been surreal, man. I can't even believe it. I can't believe it. You alluded to, you know, starting to play the drums, you know, at a young age. And that's actually perfect because I wanted to ask you about that. You know, we work at a radio station called CG92 and we've got this, this program this Christmas called 92 Guitars for 92 Kids, where we're getting, you know, a bunch of free guitars to kids who normally couldn't afford them. And I wanted to ask you, you know, whether it's about your first drum kit. I don't know if you played guitar growing up too, but you know, just like the power of the gift of music and what that can mean to a kid, because it obviously meant a lot to you. Yeah, man. And, I, and my parents were very, they weren't musicians, but they were very musical. And I remember my dad would always be like, yeah, you know, after dinner, he would take my sister and my mom and I downstairs to the den where he'd have records and, and it turn music up. And my mom and dad would dance, me and my sister would sing along. All these early influences, you know, from the Beatles and Stones and Elvis, you know, on my mom's side to Hank Williams and, and Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson, all the all the 60s doo-wop stuff that my dad listened to. And so he would always play this stuff for us. And it wasn't until I got, I think it was like seven or eight years old that I discovered Kiss. And that did it. I saw a Kiss and man, I was like, oh my God, I want to do that. And then shortly after that, it was ACDC, right? But I still didn't know I was going to be a drummer. You know, I didn't have any interest in guitar or drums really until my sister and she gave me a Rush Hemispheres, right? And she said, your music's whack. Listen to this because <laughs> she wasn't a big Kiss fan or whatever. But uh, my sister's like, you got to check this record out. And I, and I listened to Neil Peart and I listened to Rush hemispheres this i was i was like eight maybe nine and i my god i i was like drums for some reason i was like drums that drummer what is this and so i wore that record out i still have that record it has my sister wrote her name on it i i wore it out wore it out she's like where's my rush record i tell you bring it right out. what do you got next she gives me she gives me zeppelin too and I was like, there it is. And that's when I asked my parents, 
for a drum set that Christmas. Shannon, you know, you're talking about drummers right now. And, you know, JD and I were fortunate enough to go down to Los Angeles uh, to check out the Taylor Hawkins tribute show at the forum. And it was so cool to be around, you know, so many fans of Taylor's and the Foo Fighters and, you know, be around people that actually knew him. And, you know, as a drummer in a big rock band, I, I know you had some moments with Taylor over your career. Do you have one of your, your fondest memories of Taylor that you could share with us today? Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, every time I saw Taylor, that dude was just nice. Yeah, you know, he was just sweet and he was very smart and very engaging and looked you in the eyes and, and he had beautiful eyes. And he was just the, he was just the shit, man. And he played so great. He was so passionate. He was so it was always about music with him. And, you know, I've got some great pictures of me and him. I have a, a, the, the coolest one, you know, I'm, I'm holding up the camera. So I'm getting a selfie backstage with Taylor and I feel somebody or I saw it. I, 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 but anyway, somebody photobombed us and I'm like, well, the f I turn around. Oh, excuse my French. I, I, I turn around like, dude. And it was Nate. <laughs> they're, they're, bass player anyway so i thought some asshole was no was photobombing taylor and me but it was their bass player nate i thought that was funny but what can i say what can i say about taylor hawkins it was like losing i don't know uh, certainly an idol but you know i did have the opportunity to hang out with him probably five six times and uh, you know drink a couple of drinks with him and i, I don't know like he's one of those dudes like dimebag was to me man like you know you feel like you know him just from even backstage parties or whatever you feel like you know him. And that's what great artists do, man. It's still, I, it still hurts. You know, it, it, it was the worst thing that happened in the last year for me. Absolutely. And I, I, uh, I loved him and I hope that they go on. I hope they go on because, you know, you can be Led Zeppelin where they lost John Bonham and they were like, you can't go on. And one could argue that, that, that's righteous. But one can also argue and say Keith Moon, you know, the who Pete Townsend said, you know what? Our fans still want to see us and no one can replace the great Keith Moon, but the music trumps it. And so they got Kenny Jones and everybody was like, Kenny Jones. <laughs> but then they ended up with the great Starkey. And so anyway, rambling man i'm rambling we're here for I, I actually i just had one more you know as as we reflect on on our relationship with godsmack you know because we're we're a, a radio station that's been playing rock and roll for you know over four decades so we've been we've been day one with your band man um or looking back at you guys played our halloween party in 2015 when are we going to see you again you alluded to coming to the great white north i, I don't know if, if that's like if we can allude to those plans at all but man we would love to see you guys coming to canada or what's the plan I'm telling you this, after Europe, we were all sitting around and just talking about Europe. And, and, you know, we're not, we didn't do as good in Europe as we did in the States, as far as, you know, it's, it's not a radio place, really. Ironically, the places that are radio friendly and have rock radio is the places where we're, where we're big. So we were talking about, you know, should we come back and try and break these countries, try and get bigger in these countries and play in these countries. And Canada just kept coming up. We're like, why would we fly across the pond when we have our brothers right up there in the great white north? Let's just play Canada five times a year, man, and keep going back until they love us. We're going to come to Canada. I promise you that. I can make that happen just by persistence, tenacity, and my love of Canada. I do. I love you guys. We Shannon you. Larkin of uh, Godsmack, brand new album, Lighting Up the Sky, coming out in February. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon, buddy. Oh, man. Thanks for having me, y'all.